So, as I promised, here is the list of my favorite historical miniseries. In my previous video, I talked about longer historical TV shows and now it's time for the shorter productions from two-part TV movies to limited series of 10 or 12 episodes. Tut is a Canadian-American miniseries about the Egyptian pharaoh Tutankhamun. It is a highly fictionalized drama about the boy king's reign, beginning with the fact that in the series Tutankhamun looks like this and not like this. But anyway, it is a good time travel to ancient Egypt to an age we rarely see on screen. We can see some epic recreations of the city of Thebes, the valley of the kings and Tutankhamun's famous sarcophagus. Future generations will scarce remember those who perished tonight, and history will acclaim the greatness of Tutankhamun for saving the lives of so many. I, Claudius is a BBC adaptation of Robert Graves' novels. The series covers the history of the early Roman Empire, told from the perspective of the elderly Emperor Claudius, who narrates the series. This is the oldest production on this list, but I think it's a timeless classic. Derek Jacob is Claudius is the most likable hero I have ever seen in a historical show, and the series gives a detailed narration about the most important figures who shaped the Roman Empire in the first century. Have you been in the Senate? On the steps. I'm not allowed in the Senate. No, neither am I. They won't allow me in because I'm a woman and they won't allow you in because you're a fool. That's strange when you come to think of it because it's filled with nothing but old women and fools. <laughs> the White Queen is a British miniseries that is set during England's turbulent Wars of the Roses period. But it gives us a new perspective of this one imperial. We see it through the eyes of three important women in this era. Elizabeth Woodville, Anne Neville and Margaret Beaufort. The series is based on three novels of Philippa Gregory whose protagonists are those three ladies. When I saw it back then in 2003, 13. I loved it so much I couldn't get enough of it and I watched it again and again. No wonder it got so many honors and Emmy and Golden Globe nominations. Your Grace, I must return to my lord and husband. You will go whenever I command it, Countess Warwick. And all of you will dance to whatever tune I sing. Sophia is a Russian TV series about the last Byzantine princess who became Grand Princess of Moscow as the wife of Ivan the Great of Russia. The series shows how Sofia adapts to the foreign Russian court, how she and Ivan develop a loving marriage, Ivan defeats the Golden Horde and in the end, Sofia becomes the first influential female figure of Russia. This was the second Russian series I watched after Yekaterina and it didn't disappoint either. It is a very well made high quality series. It is available with English subtitles on Amazon Prime. <laughs> Maximilian is a German-Austrian miniseries about Maximilian I and Mary of Burgundy. It follows Mary's rule in Burgundy as her father suddenly dies and she struggles to succeed him as the country's first female ruler, her choice to marry Maximilian of Austria and their joint fight against France. It is an exciting dynamic drama with political schemes, battles, romance, set in three different courts of Europe, Austria, Burgundy and France. Sogar meine Kleidung ist geboren. Wir finden sicher etwas bei euch. Ihr seid in der Hauptstadt des Tuchhandels. Ihr seid sehr großzügig. Nein. Ihr werdet natürlich alles abarbeiten. The White Princess is the sequel of The White Queen. It is also based on Philippa Gregory's novels. The protagonist is Elizabeth of York, the White Princess, uh, who has to marry Henry VII after he and the new Tudor dynasty emerged victorious from the bloody wars of the roses. So in the series we see the turbulent first half of Henry's reign through Elizabeth's eyes, we see how they both find their way as king and queen of England. Jodie Comer is very good as Elizabeth of York, Michel Frehley is also great as uh, Margaret Beaufort, and actually I also read the book The White Princess and I must say I liked the TV series much better, they made several differences in the adaptation that made it better in my opinion. I sometimes wonder what I would have been, what I would have chosen had my life been ordinary. That is what my life has been as well. A puppet for my mother's own ambition.
Conquistadores Adventum is a Spanish series about the first 30 years of the colonization of the Americas, starting with Columbus's first voyage and including the most important events in these 30 years, Magellan's circumnavigation for example. It is a very detailed, kinda objective account of the events, it is almost like a documentary. So it's very accurate historically and the American locations are also authentic. Y decís que vuestra intención es sortear por mar el nuevo continente y continuar viaje hasta las Indias. Así es, excelencia. ¿Puede don Fernando de Magallanes ilustrar a todos los aquí presentes acerca de por qué debería la corona española patrocinar una expedición de tal envergadura? Wolf Hall is a British miniseries based on Hilary Mantel's novels. It is about Thomas Cromwell's rise to power in the court of Henry VIII. The show has been praised for its accuracy compared to other modern Tudor dramas like The Tudors or The White Princess. I think it was rather a critical success than an audience favorite. As far as I know, it's not that well known worldwide as other British serials. Its cast has some very good British actors, Damien Lewis, Claire Foy, Jonathan Price, and young stars like Tom Holland and Thomas Brody Sangster. You say that if I die, he can put another queen in my place. I can't imagine anyone else in your place, sweetheart. The Virgin Queen is a four-part miniseries about the life of Elizabeth I, starring Anne Mary Duff and Tom Hardy. It was made in 2005 and in the same year another Elizabeth drama came out, Elizabeth I with Helen Mirren, which was more successful than this one, but for some reason I like The Virgin Queen better and I also prefer Anne Mary Duff's Elizabeth. It is quite an accurate portrayal of Elizabeth's whole life from her difficult young years during Mary's reign to her death after her long and eventful reign. I have the body of a weak and feeble woman. But I have the heart and stomach of a king! And a king of England, too! Peter the Great is an American miniseries about the life of Peter I of Russia. It had an all-star cast back then in 1986. It was very successful, it won a lot of awards. I saw it many years ago and I liked it very much. And although now I know that it had several historical inaccuracies, I still think it is one of the best miniseries I have ever seen. The wooden palace cannot be defended. It can easily be burnt to the ground. It's better than being attacked in the Kremlin in the middle of the night with no escape. My sister had the same plan when I was a boy. John Adams is an American miniseries about the founding father who was the second president of the United States. It is a pretty accurate retelling about John Adams' role in the American independence and in the country's first years. The series also focuses on his relationship with his family, especially with his wife, Abigail Adams, who was not only his trusted friend but also his political advisor. I think it tells a lot about what high quality this series has that it still holds a very remarkable primetime Emmy record. It won 13 Emmy awards in a single year, more than any other series. Even Game of Thrones has never managed to break this record. This war touches people that your Congress treats with the same contempt King George reserves for the people of Boston. I mean women, yes, and slaves too for that matter. Napoleon and Josephine, A Love Story is a three-part miniseries about the famous love story of the Emperor of the French and his first wife. It is about the story of their love from their first meeting to Josephine's death, but the series also includes the most important events in Napoleon's career during these years. Even though it didn't have much success back then when it aired, I think it is one of those few TV series that aged very well throughout the decades and it still looks very good, you couldn't tell it's more than 30 years. Years old. The costumes, the scenery, everything looks very good and of high quality. Perhaps you would like to dance with me? I would like to try. Victoria and Albert is a British TV serial with Victoria Hamilton and Jonathan Firth. It covers the romance and family life of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert while showing some of the most important political events too during Victoria's early reign. I think this has been the most accurate representation of this couple so far. Their whole relationship is built around scenes we know that actually happened in real life. 
It's this wretched exhibition. We can't find an acceptable design for the building. The critics are right. It's an eyesore. Critics. Band of Brothers is an American miniseries based on historian Stephen Ambrose's non-fiction book. It is about a real American company, the Easy Company, during the Second World War, from their training through their participation in the major actions in Europe in the last year of the war. Everything in the series is based on real history, the characters, the events, the actions. I think it is one of the best miniseries ever made, it is just perfection. Actually, I have seen many miniseries lists that name Band of Brothers the best miniseries ever. I think it is also the highest rating miniseries on IMDb. Talbot, you'll take 10 men along the dike. Peacock, you'll take 10 men along the left flank. I'll take 10 up the middle, so follow me. Questions? Go. Chernobyl is an HBO miniseries from last year and I think it needs no introduction. It was a major hit in 2019 and I completely understand why. Outstanding writing, outstanding acting, a drama so intriguing that you can do nothing but binge watch it. It is the last and most recent series on this list and it is a bit different from the others because it is not about royals, it is not about wars, but it is about a very unique tragic event in our history and it also has a very important message about politics. Where I once would fear the cost of truth, now I only ask, what is the cost of lies?